Hi, artist. This week we are learning about ancient Rome. So I've decorated our little virtual classroom here with some things about ancient Rome. I'm going to go through some of the history with you, some of the basics, and then we will talk about what you will be reading about. Okay, so ancient Rome started um, as some mud huts in a small village. And over a thousand years, it encompassed most of Europe. So we'll, we'll show a map in a little bit. But legend has it that two men named Romulus and Remus that were raised by a wolf, <laughs> that's why you see that picture there, it's a famous sculpture, founded Rome in 753 BC on the summit of the Palatine Hill by the Tiber River, which is modern day Rome, um, middle of Rome. So it started as a community of shepherds in mud huts and then grew to be a vibrant city that spread over seven hills. And then after they they built up an army, a very powerful army, they became the center of the largest empire the world has had yet known. They ended up conquering most of Europe. Okay, so another thing that they sort of started is a lot of principles of government that we still use today. So Roman citizens created a republic in which they elected representatives as leaders. This was a really big deal at the time. You didn't have to be a royal. You didn't have to be famous. You didn't have to be um, born into money. You could be anyone. Uh, they elected representatives as leaders to represent the people. Government by the people was something that Rome sort of popularized. After the first 500 years, problems arose. People were unhappy. Julius Caesar, who's a very ambitious person who didn't come from much, rose to power and declared himself dictator for life. Um, for the next 500 years, Rome was an empire that was led by a series of, of different emperors um, until the Roman em Empire eventually collapsed. Okay, the powerful Roman army conquered many rivals, so the Roman Empire was huge. And by 146 BC, the Roman Republic ruled most of the land that surrounded the Mediterranean Sea, and then it just grew from there. So that picture is of a Roman gladiator or centurion, which is the soldiers that they had. Okay, now let's talk about when this was. Let's go back to our timeline. You can see I added to the one from the other lessons. Um, you can see the Roman Empire is around here. So um, around 700 BC to 500 AD was when the Roman Empire sort of existed and expanded. This is how it started. This is in 218 BC. So this is, uh, you know, 500 years after it started. This is at the time of Julius Caesar, the Roman Republic. Um, then it grew. So by 44 BC, it had encompassed um, this much. So it's the death of Julius Caesar. That's huge, right? It's growing even more. Um, in AD 14, it was this big. It had uh, conquered, you know, and covered most of most of Egypt, a lot of what used to be Mesopotamia, we learned that before, right? Spain. And then um, at, its, at its largest extent in AD 120, it had encompassed Britain as well, as well as Assyria and most of Africa. So the Roman Empire really is that that big. There's Roman aqueducts and Roman structures in, in, in England, in Great Britain, in Spain, everywhere. That's how big it is. Okay, so we talked about when. Let's cover more about where. So this is our world map, the one that we're using for this unit. We talked about Mesopotamia. We talked about Greece. We talked about Egypt. And the blue part is the Roman Empire. What's interesting about the Roman Empire is because it covered most of Europe, that phrase, and I don't know if you've heard about heard this before, um, all roads lead to Rome. That's because they did. If the Roman Empire ruled most of Europe, a lot of roads in Europe eventually lead to Rome because they started in Rome and they built from there. Rome was the center of the of the Roman Empire. In the second century AD, so about 200 AD, Rome was at the height of its power and the population was more than a million citizens. So these systems of roads helped Roman ar armies move more quickly 
and increased travel, communication, trade, etc., so that they could keep the Roman Empire thriving as it did. So here's kind of an example of the the system of Roman roads. You can see it covers most of Europe and part of part of the Middle East, the top of Africa, England, all of that. So the Appian Way is the main road through Rome. Um, there were a few roads already existing and they're Etruscan. When I say Etruscan, I mean the people that came before the Roman Empire. Um, Etruscan is why it's called Tuscany in Italy. By the late Republic, the Romans had expanded over most of it, Italy and were masters of road construction as well as a lot of other things. Their roads began at Rome where the master list of destinations was located and they went all the way to the ends of, of their land, which extended this far. That is why all roads, all roads lead to Rome. Okay, we talked about when, we talked about where, let's talk about what they accomplished. What are the Romans famous for? One thing that we've already sort of touched on is politics. So they developed a represented government elected by the people and an organized system of law. The Romans had elected officials and a senate, so that's where we get that word, where anyone could be involved in government. The most famous Roman was Julius Caesar, and he was a commoner that uh, rose to power and became a, became a general. So a little bit more about Julius Caesar because your OLS doesn't cover it. Caesar was a politician and a general. Eventually, he declared himself the dictator of Rome. He defied the Senate and famously crossed the Rubicon River. They told him not, not to come into Roman territory, and he did anyway. He was exiled, but then he defied them. Um, and he caused a civil war. He defeated uh, Pompey, who was another general, who fled to e Egypt at where he was assassinated. Caesar followed followed him and became romantically involved with Cleopatra. Interesting story. This stuff is like, um, like a juicy novel. Caesar was master of Rome. He made himself consul and dictator, which didn't make a too lot of people happy. Um, he did do a lot of great things. He relieved debt. He made the Senate bigger. He built the Roman Forum and he revised the calendar. That's why we have July, among a lot of other other months. Um, his success angered a lot of people. And then um, in the Ides of March, uh, that's the 15th of March, 44 BC, he was stabbed in the back quite famously. You too, Brute. If you guys read that read that um, story in history or you uh, read the Shakespearean play, you guys know what I'm talking about. Caesar Augustus was his nephew. And he was um, given the name Caesar Augustus eventually and uh, began his rule of the Roman Empire. Um, Augustus, so Caesar Augustus restored peace and stability to Rome um, because uh, things were a little bit dicey after uh, Caesar, Caesar, Julius Caesar was assassinated. After he was established as, um, as the emperor, he, they had a 200 years of peace which for a society that was known for its wars and its fighting and its conquering, they just gone through two civil wars, a 200 years of peace was really welcome. So a lot of art was created during that time. And that was called the Pax Romana. So the time of Roman peace. And there you see his statue. Okay, so as well as politics gives you background, um, we're going to talk about the arch architecture that resulted from a lot of, of that background. So. The Romans were amazing builders. Roman architects built temple complexes for worship and constructed civic structures for ent entertainment and transportation. Their architecture re reflects their strong beliefs and their beliefs in, in the importance of humans. And we talked about this with Greece, where they, they believed that um, humans were important enough to interact with gods. So that's something that we don't see throughout all of history. It was something that the Romans and the Greeks shared, that they believed that humans were that important. The Romans borrowed many gods directly from Greek mythology and that just gave them new names. So that's why you might be confused between um, Zeus and Jupiter, Aphrodite and Venus. It's the same concept. The Romans just had, kind of took that culture and renamed it. They also took a lot of their uh, architecture ideas and sculpture ideas. So sometimes if you're learning it for the first time, it's a, a little bit hard to distinguish between what's Roman and what's Greek, but I'll, I'll help you. But the things that we're specifically going to talk about are the arch, vault, and dome, which are things that the um, Romans were able to do because of concrete. We're going to talk about Roman column, columns. We're going to talk about concrete. We will cover the Pantheon and the Arch of Titus. If you come to live class, I will talk about Roman aqueducts and the Colosseum, as well as my time in Italy. So I have lots of pictures to share.
All right, the art that the Romans created, I broke that down into sculpture, painting, and mosaics. They created a lot of really good art during the time of Roman peace, because if you're not fighting all the time, you have time to create some pretty cool art. So the sculpture that they created, uh, we will talk about relief sculptures in the Arch of Titus. We'll talk about um, kind of the rules, the, the way that they created the sculptures generally at the time, um, how you can tell a Roman sculpture when you see one. Talk about specifically Augustus of Prima Porta, which is the uh, statue of Augustus that you saw in the other the other picture. And we'll talk again about the contraposto pose, so that one bent leg pose that we talked about first when we, when we were learning about ancient Greece. As far as painting, we're going to talk about fresco painting basics, um, and we'll talk about Pompeii frescoes and the Ioxion Room um, in Pompeii. So we'll talk about. Uh, what fresco painting is. Um, if you come to live class, I will show you the fresco that I made in Italy. I'll, sh I'll tell you some tips why fresco painting is so amazing and so incredibly difficult. And I'll share some pictures from my, um, my time living in Italy and my trip to Pompeii when I was there. Um, mosaics, we're going to learn how mosaics are made. We're going to learn the, the term tesserae, which is the little pieces of glass or pebbles that they inserted to make mosaics. And we're going to look at some really cool mosaics in class. Okay, so that's the basics of what you are going to learn. Um, when you are learning, I want you to keep an eye out for art project ideas. So for the art project for module two, which is not happening for quite a while, not until um, right around the, like the middle of the class, so the midterms, um, week eight, week seven or eight. Um, I want you to keep an eye out for the architecture challenge, which is uh, taking one, one architecture structure and reconstructing it in any way that you want to, paper mache, clay that you got in your kit, um, anything. I had a student one time make take hot glue and pasta and reconstruct the Colosseum. So really it is anything that you can come up with. I want you to be as creative as possible if that's what you pick. Um, keep an eye on the famous pieces of art that we're talking about. Um, just like in when we talked about Greece, we talked about Wing Victory. We talked about um, Nefertiti with, um, with Egyptian art, keep keep an eye out for things that you might want to sketch for your art project. You can always do that. Um, keep an eye out for that. You don't have to sketch it. You could also paint it if you wanted to, anything. Um, pottery, sculpture, um, one of your art project ideas is uh, creating a piece of pottery. Uh, so designing it uh, using clay, the air dry clay that you got in your kits or, or other clay, it doesn't really matter. I've had a student use paper mache before. There's also the photo challenge. The photo scavenger hunt for um, module two for the art project number two is, um, you know, going around your city or town, taking pictures of columns or architectural elements that we talk about and identifying them. You need at least 10. So keep an eye out for that. Maybe you can start taking pictures on your phone or your camera now, or you can always choose your own. If you're looking through this stuff and you have a really good idea of an art project that you'd like to try, um, keep it in the back of your mind so that you know what you're going to do by the time it's art project time. All right, so what kind of assignments go with this lesson? Um, you want to read either the OLS or the summary. If you guys just want to read the summary that I make, that's totally fine. You want to take, of course, the Ancient Greece and Rome quiz that goes along with that. At the end of the summary, I have an end of lesson review. Uh, at the end of the OLS, I want you to make sure that you're taking the end of lesson quizzes. Um, writing assignment number three goes along with this this unit. So um, make sure that you are completing that. And that's about whether you think it's ethical or, or right or fair for other countries to take historical artifacts from, from countries and put them somewhere else, whether in a museum or in their own country. Um, and then vocabulary test for unit three, that of course goes with unit three. So keep an eye out for that and make sure that you get everything done. I will send out a checklist email, of course, um, at the end of it. All right have fun and go read about ancient Rome. I'm sure you will find it as interesting as I do. If you are confused about anything, please come to office hours. If you don't understand the material, coming to live class is always a good idea, of course, as well. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.